What is up everybody and welcome to the inaugural video for my new sim rig. Oh crap, sorry, let me fix that camera for you guys. Sorry about that guys, I had my camera set in Daniel apt mode for uh, when I want to act like I'm really good at this. But there's going to be none of that happening in today's video. We are not going to be doing good at all. Yes. Indeed, this is going to be the inauguration of the sim rig that you guys saw me build in that previous video a couple videos ago. I do, however, feel like it is finally time to explain to you guys why I keep doing a lot of pink accenting now that we finally have the rig built. Uh, actually, the rig was supposed to be built before I ever put in the half cage, but the reason the half cage is pink is also partially because of the seat here. On the other side of my TV that we have here, which, by the way, is a 55-inch 4K and is what I use as my main monitor, Although the room is kitted for VR, if I wanted to play anything in VR, you will find my PC. Now my PC, when I built it, was a themed PC, and I wanted to do a theme that people haven't done often, and that was a pastel pink and black build. So as you can see, I've accented a lot of parts of the PC with pink. As you can see, the fluid is just distilled water at the moment, and that is due to a motherboard, power supply, and CPU failure that all simultaneously happened at the same time. I do believe it was the motherboard that killed the other two uh, that caused me to have to rebuild everything and the power supply sits on top of the computer because it doesn't fit in the space where the old power supply was because when they replaced it they didn't give me the same one they gave me a new one which was bigger than the one that I already had in there. So I have to redo the water cooling loop in there which is why I haven't changed it but it is a pastel pink fluid running through those tubes when I have that. Aggressive jump cut. Okay guys. Um, so it's a little bit later. Uh, I filmed the first bit and then Shadow Play had issues. Um, so I lost a little bit of footage uh, and I've been playing around with it and hopefully I have a solution to it. But let me go ahead and hop into the sim and I will explain to you guys what we're going to be able to be doing today. So the goal today is I haven't played a racing simulator. Well, never played in a sim with a steering wheel, but I've played with controllers. I haven't played even with a controller. It's been about five years since I last did. So. This is going to be a good introduction to the sim rig for me. And the plan today is I picked the Nordschleife because it's a very large, long track uh, with a lot of complexities that I don't know and I'm not going to be able to learn very quickly. I have no assists on currently. I don't have any ABS on, no traction control. Uh, I don't have the racing line on. I have nothing to basically tell me when to brake, how to brake, and there's nothing to assist me with my braking or anything like that either. So. That's how I'm going to be doing it. The plan is, is I'm going to drive around the track this one time, now two times, uh, to try and get a idea of what the track layout is going to be like. And then I'm going to run five practice laps where I'm going to be going at a better, faster pace and trying to more or less race it. After those five laps, I'm going to run one lap. That one lap is going to be the lap that we're going to take. Now I haven't been able to set up the rig exactly how I want to yet. Uh, there's some things about it that I'm not entirely thrilled about. I don't love the force feedback settings. I haven't fully gotten that set up. Uh, I haven't fully found the right field of view for me uh, on Oseto Corsa, which is what we're going to be playing today. We're going to be playing Oseto Corsa. That's what this is. So I'm not going to bore you guys with this. I'm going to go ahead and do my one lap and then we'll go ahead and jump into practice. After practice, we'll go ahead and jump and see how quickly I can lap the Nordschleife. Let me just quickly introduce you guys to the car that we're running. Uh, it is a BMW 1M. It is one of the vehicles that is available in Assetto Corsa for me uh, to play around with in this practice session. And it's the closest car when it comes to specs and performance that I could think of to my M3 that I currently race in real life. I've kept this car very stock. I haven't done the tune to it that is available. Um, so it is the stock 1M. The 1M being a more powerful car does mean that the times are going to vary a little bit. Uh, but it's the best comparison we can go for, so I'm okay with it. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and hop into these practice laps, which are going to be more race pace than the last uh, lap that we did, and I will probably crash a lot. So let's get a move on.
here we have it. We are going to finally do our flying lap around the Nordschleife. I've had my practice in. I have stopped on the straight or at the end of the straight here. So we're going to go ahead and go around and get the lap timer reset. And we're going to go for one flying lap. I know in this car, in real life, the 1M, it can do an 8.05. I have no expectation of even getting close to that. Uh, like I said, this is going to be the official run. I've had my practice in. I've been able to run almost crash free. Um, so hopefully, now that the pressure's on, I can run crash free. But, as I've mentioned already, this is the take it or leave it run. So, if I crash, even if it's a significant crash, I'm taking the time. See that? I am taking this time. Luckily, I like being there, but luckily this next corner already slows me down enough as it is, so I'm not really losing a whole heck of a lot. Part of the difficulty here is I'm trying to talk to the camera while driving this. I want to make it entertaining, but I'm also, you know, unable to really focus if I'm talking to the camera the whole time. Like that. Because usually when I'm in my practice labs, I only talk to the camera when something goes wrong. Because, well, you guys don't see all of them. There we go. Now, I, I have been able to get into fourth here, but I do know about this corner right here, so it has to slow me down anyway. So no point in going into fourth there since it's getting pretty close. Then I've got these slower corners right here as well. One, two, three. And I've got one more set of corners, or yeah, one more set of corners, a left and a right, or a right and a left in that order, onto a long straight where I can start putting the foot down. I do have to be careful at the top of it. No! Oh, okay. Well, it didn't crash me, but that was uh, not good. Brake, 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 brake. I might be able to brake later there, that, but in my practice, if I tried to brake too late there, it caused me to crash. Okay, this corner is a gotcha corner for me. So I gotta be careful here. That's what I mean by it's a gotcha corner for me. Because it's such a fast corner. Or you come at it so fast and you have to break on a straight. Now I have not crashed on that since the first run. So the pressure was definitely getting to me there. But luckily it wasn't a significant crash. We can recover from this. This is also a gotcha corner mainly because I forget that there's a corner. I think I'm just coming on a nice good straight. Oh my gosh! None of this was happening in practice. I was not spinning from braking in practice more than a couple times. But like I said, we're taking it. Take it or leave it. On, we can recover. The closest I got was a 920 in practice, so although I'm having my issues right now, if I can get a 920, I will be happy. So that is the goal, is a 920 or less. That still puts me a minute off pace of the real car on the real track. Of course it didn't help there that I hit my microphone. Once again, my braking points, my driving line, aren't really all there, because I don't have a lot of experience on this track to have them be all there. Section. 
This gets me right here. This corner gets me. I forget it's a slow corner. And then we're going to come on a nice long foot on the floor section with minor lifts. Because we're coming up on kilometer 12. Here. Around this corner. It's around the right hander part of this corner. Man, I know there's probably someone watching me do this that knows this track that is cringing at my line right now. But don't you worry. It's not going to get any better. At least not yet. Not going to get any better in this video, I should say. This is a lift section, but I hit the brake, whatever. And then we on the brake here. And we come out to the top of this hill. We're going to have our first of the two carousels. Staying in. I know, you wouldn't do that in a real race car. But this has no damage. Damage is turned off. gear shifting, forgetting that this corner exists, which I always do, means we're coming up on the next carousel. Yeah, I always forget that last corner exists and I go way too fast into it. Okay, if we cross the finish line in five seconds, we get the time. No? Okay. Oh well. I was looking at the timer, I shouldn't have been doing that. I also should have been in third there the whole time, but no. No, I forgot. Okay, 8.23, this is not terrible. Or we might be able to get the time I'm looking for. If I remember to shift gears on time. This fast section I have a tendency to crash in. So I've got to take it slow. There we go, I just can't break through it or you're gonna be done. Ok, 
Okay, let's see if I can cross the finish line without crashing. And there we have it, a 915-007. That's exactly what I was talking about. So the fastest time I have been able to do around here just so happened to be that time right there. Uh, that happens to be 10 seconds off, almost exactly 10 seconds off, or a minute and 10 seconds off of the actual pace that the 1M can do around the Nürburgring. Uh, but it's still, you know, a minute and 10 seconds off. Then again, the person who did the original drive on the Nürburgring with the real 1M is a lot more of an experienced driver than I am with a lot more years experience and he didn't limit himself to no practice whatsoever well I say that I had practice I just didn't have all the practice that I wanted to but I think that just about does it let's go ahead and get the car back into the pits here the reason I was doing this was kind of to get my first impressions with the steering wheel and the whole setup uh, I, I'm not entirely sure what it's how it's gonna be I played around with it a little bit in preparation for this but I really wanted this video to be a first impression uh, and a lot of failure because that's exactly what I expected it to be and that's exactly what it was There was a lot of crashing into walls back there for me But I am going to revisit this car on this track in this sim a set of course uh, uh, In the future and then we'll see how much has improved anyway guys. I hope you enjoyed the video stay tuned I have more sim racing content to come, but don't worry. I haven't forgotten about the real car I have some work that needs to get done to that as well So we're going to go ahead and be doing a lot of both of that this winter Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed and you have a good one